Okay, guys, today we're going to talk about the last part of finishes. Um, these are going to be functional finishes. We talked about aesthetic finishes in our previous class, where we changed the textiles aesthetically. So we changed the hand, the drape, the texture, the color of the fabric. Um, in functional finishes, we don't necessarily change the appearance of the fabric, but we enhance the performance of the fabric. Um, so there are finishes that may enhance the comfort uh, of the wearer. They may improve ease of maintenance so that it's not too hard to wash it, to dry it, and so on. It may enhance safety and protection, and it may enhance durability. These type of finishes sometimes add cost because they're a little more expensive. <clears throat> they may also affect the hand of the fabric, the drape of the fabric. Sometimes uh, the strength can be reduced by those functional finishes. Uh, we also do these finishes similar to aesthetic finishes. It may be a chemical finish. It may be topical. So you do it on the surface of the fabric or there may be additives used. If you look at this table from um, the previous course, we talked about aesthetic finishes which changed those four properties uh, on appearance. And we categorize as functional finishes into comfort, maintenance, safety, protection, and durability and enhancing finishes. So we talk about comfort, there are anti-static finishes, we use softeners, um, there are temper temperature regulating finishes, which basically make the person who wears these garments more comfortable. And then maintenance related finishes are finishes such as durable press, wrinkle resistant finish, soil resistant finish. Um, with safety and protection, we have flame resi resistant finishes, antimicrobial finishes, and durability related ones, abrasion resistant finish or slip resistant finish. So I'm going to talk about each of those finishes and we'll dive into some details about some of those. These are just some examples. Um, you cannot really tell if a fabric has a functional finish because the appearance doesn't necessarily change, but you can tell when you're using the fabric. For example, this fabric has uh, a water repellent finish. So when you put water on it, the water just stays like beads on the surface of the fabric. It doesn't get absorbed. This one has a stain resistant finish. So they spilled what looks like mustard here. If you wash it off, it doesn't stain the fabric. This one has a durable press finish, which means that it's uh, much easier to iron that kind of fabric. Moth proof finish for wool fabric so that moths don't eat the wool. This is a flame retardant sleepwear fabric so that it doesn't catch flames very easily. And this is, has an antimicrobial finish so that it prevents growth of microbes. We're gonna start with ease of maintenance. One finish we do is shrinkage control because fabrics shrink and if you want them not to shrink, you have to go through a certain process to reduce shrinkage. Shrinkage can happen in two different ways. Uh, there's rela relaxation shrinkage, which means that every time you wash your fabric, you know, especially in the first cycle, it will relax and it will shrink. Uh, progressive shrinkage is every time you wash something, each time it shrinks a little bit. So cotton, flax, lyocell, rayon, cellulosic fibers generally have relaxation shrinkage, but fibers like wool, uh, thermoplastics, rayon, those will have progressive shrinkage as you go. So we do finishes to stabilize the fabric so that it doesn't shrink as much. Uh, with knit fabrics, we can uh, heat set them uh, or sometimes, you know, there's overfeeding the fabric between sets of rollers will kind of stabilize it a little bit. With woven fabrics, there are mechanical processes where you shrink the fabric first so that it doesn't shrink anymore later on. Um, so there are different types of finishing. Thermoplastic fibers generally go through a heat setting process to prevent shrinkage. Wool fibers, uh, 
if you guys remember, wool fibers have that scale on the surface. So if we mask that scale and make it a little bit softer, it prevents shrinkage of wool fabrics. So we may do that by coating the surface of the wool fibers with some kind of polyamide solution that will make it a little smoother. That way the fibers don't get stuck on each other and shrink. Halogenation is another finish we do. Uh, that's a treatment of the fabric with chlorine to dissolve the scales. And that also prevents shrinkage of wool fabrics. Uh, in rayon, we sometimes use resins to prevent uh, the swelling and the stretching. There are so many different words used when we are talking about wrinkle resistant finishes. So there's durable press, permanent press, wrinkle free fabric, wrinkle resistant fabric. Those are all different terms, but basically the purpose of all of those are to make it easier to iron the fabric or that you don't require ironing. It doesn't get wrinkled as much. And cellulosic fibers especially wrinkle a lot. So most cellulosic fibers get uh, treated with something to make it a wrinkle-free or wrinkle-resistant fabric. Uh, with wrinkle resistant finish, we use resin uh, and cellulosic fibers sometimes get cross-linked so that they don't move around, the molecular chains don't move around and cause wrinkling. And I'll explain this to you a little bit with this. So remember, the fibers are made out of uh, molecu long molecular chains. So this may be the repeating unit and this is a long chain. And in these chains, when you wrinkle the fabric, the chains will move to different ways and they will uh, lose their smoothness. Like the fabric smoothness will be lost and it will get wrinkled. But when these chains are more stabilized, that they don't, you know, even if they're moved, like they kind of go back to where they were before, then you won't get any, any wrinkling. And to do that, we cross-link these molecular chains with some kind of reactant or a resin. So basically, you know, if you think about this, this is a molecular chain and it's a long molecule that goes like this, this, this unit repeats all over and over. And this is another molecular chain. And we are just linking those two chains, like this chain and this chain together with some kind of um resin or a reactant and when we bond those molecules together then you have some kind of cross-linking here so whenever you move the fabric or wrinkle the fabric these uh, cross links will move the chains back to where they were and the fabric will stay smooth so this is kind of the essence of a wrinkle resistant finish on a fabric so um, cross links return the molecules to their original shape and it prevents wrinkling. Uh, when you cross link, there are usually problems as well. You know, the fabric may get a little bit yellower, they lose strength, um, the hand will not be as good. So that may cause certain issues. So those type of finishes all have other side effects, obviously. Uh, durable, durable press fabrics retain their smooth appearance um, even after laundering. So with these finishes, you just saturate the fabric with resin first. Um, you can cure the fabric or heat set the fabric and then sew it, or you can sew it first and then heat set the fabric to make uh, a durable press fabric. Now, I'm not gonna go into too many of the details, but um, what I want you guys to understand is there are different techniques to do all these different finishes. And when a fabric has that kind of finish, sometimes it's on the label. So this fabric, for example, has wrinkle-free on the label. You know that it has been treated with a wrinkle-free finish. Um, there are other ways where how you know about how we do those type of finishes. You know, you may immerse it in chemicals. Uh, you may spray on a certain chemical to make it uh, 
more wrinkle free or you apply chemicals as a vapor in a closed chamber and you make them uh, wrinkle free so there are a lot of different techniques different chemical methods processes that are used to make durable press fabrics with wool generally resin is used with silk polycarboxylic acid is used there are other appearance retention finishes uh, for example soil release finish stain release finish abrasion resistant finish so i'm going to talk about each of these finishes a little bit Soil and stain, res stain resistant finishes are great finishes to do on carpets uh, because carpets, if everybody's walking on them, they get stained easily, they get dirty. So soil resistant finish basically makes it easier to clean the carpet. So the soil is not absorbed into the fiber. When you vacuum it, it can be uh, removed from the fabric and also the stain resistant finish will prevent staining of the carpet when you spill something on it. To do those, we use floor chemicals, organosilicons. Um, so there are chemicals we use to make a fabric soil resistant or stain resistant. This is a stain resistant fabric. They spilled some milk on this fabric. Now this fabric is basically coated with a Teflon finish. And Teflon from those Teflon pans that we use, um, that is actually some kind of polymer where you can apply to the surface of the fabric to make it stain resistant. And stain resistant finish usually makes the fabric also water resistant because liquids don't get absorbed into the fabric. So the milk is now beating up on the surface. It's not getting absorbed and you can just easily wash that off the fabric and it will not stain the fabric. So this is kind of how this works. This is another stain resistant fabric. You see that they dropped some juice on here and then they washed it off or they dabbed it with a paper towel and you see that there is no stains left on the fabric. Now this fabric has a stain resistant finish they put some bleach on this one and you can see that um, you know if you put some bleach and let it sit for 30 minutes it would definitely make this area completely white but you can see that it actually didn't happen uh, i mean it does have a little bit of a stain like a whiteness here but this is minimal because of the stain resistant finish because if you put Clorox on something like this and sit for 30 minutes, it will definitely remove all that color normally. Abrasion resistant finish generally uses resins and that increases the uh, resistance to abrasion, you know, improves or prevents the friction on the fabric. Anti slip or slip resistant finish, some of those really smooth filament yarns can actually be very slippery it's kind of the opposite of abrasion and to prevent that slip uh, on the fabric surface we can do a finish and it will also reduce fraying of the filaments there's fume fading resistant finish anti-fume or atmospheric fading protective finish these type of finishes minimize fume fading uh, remember we talked about this before the fumes and combustion fumes and uh, pollution sometimes makes a fabric change its color or its strength especially acetate fabrics go through this a lot so those type of finishes will prevent that from happening uh, we can also coat fabrics to prevent them from fraying or uh, especially for tufted fabrics, if you have piles on the surface, you want to prevent the piles from coming off. So we do a back coating on the back. Uh, this is true for bath, bathroom mats or um, other types of mats that you use in the house. You know, sometimes you do a plastic coating so that it doesn't slip when you step on it. Um, so those type of 
processes can be considered a type of finish as well. But of course, you know, this type of uh, coating always makes the fabric peel sometimes, they flake. If you put it in the washing machine, uh, the flakes will get on your other fabrics. So there are always issues with these type of finishes. Okay, light stabilizing finish. This uh, is a finish that prevents the damage by sunlight on the textiles. So these are light stabilizers or UV absorbers. Pilling resistant finish will minimize pill formation. Um, we talked about stain resistant finish. This will usually also give you a water resistant finish, uh, but there are also water repellent or waterproof finishes. There are moisture management finishes. There's water absorbent finishes that makes a fabric more absorbent. There are UV absorbent finishes, anti-static finishes. So I'm going to talk about each of those uh, and I'll also show you guys some samples, some examples from iTextiles. Now with a water repellent finish, you usually coat the textile material or laminate it, or you can sometimes bond it with some kind of layer uh, that is impermeable to water. And if you have a water repellent finish, that's also usually stain resistant because if the fabric doesn't absorb water, it's not going to absorb any other liquids, so it will be stain resistant in that way. We use fluorocarbons generally to improve water repellency. Sometimes there are wax emulsions or metallic soaps that are used, resins, silicones, those can be used. Um, so different ways to finish a fabric for water repellency. And when a fabric is water repellent, then your water droplets will just stay like beads on the surface and it's never going to wet the fabric or get absorbed by the fabric. Um, this you can't obviously tell that this is water repellent, but this is a rainwear. So these are good for um, rain coats, winter coats, and so on. The porosity control, I mentioned, you know, it can uh, limit the penetration of air from the fabric. Water absorbent finish. Um, if you've seen any of those commercials, you know, where they advertise those fabrics where it can absorb so much more than its own weight. Um, so those kind of finishes are used on fabrics like this that we use for maybe cleaning or, um, you know, you use it as a towel. So it absorbs water and moisture a lot more than normal. UV blocker, UV absorbent finishes. These incorporate chemical compounds that absorb energy from the UV light and uh, it protects the fabrics in a way. The anti-static finish, if you guys know uh, when you have like pantyhose and a dress and they stick to each other because they're so much static, I mean, it's the most uncomfortable feeling. So sometimes we do an anti-static finish where we are trying to improve the conductivity of the surface because static usually happens uh, because of the dryness of the fabric where you are just accumulating all the electrons and uh, it's not very conductive. So when you improve the conductivity, then you get rid of static. Um, and we use fabric softeners for this sometimes. Uh, but you can also do a finish with softeners to just soften the hand of the fabric. Phase change finishes are finishes that are also called temperature regulating finishes. So these are finishes on the fabric where you are either absorbing heat when it's too hot or you're releasing it when it's too cold. So you're regulating the temperature of the person who's wearing the garment. And uh, there are different ways of doing it. So I'll talk a little bit more about this in iTextiles. And then there are biological control finishes like insect control, moth control, especially for wool fibers that are eaten by moths and insects. We do a moth control finish. Uh, there's mold and mildew control finishes, especially for cellulosic and hydrophilic fabrics. There's rot proof finishes for outdoor products. Uh, for medical textiles that are antimicrobial finishes 
that prevents growth of microbes. And there are microencapsulated finishes. There are actually a lot of advances in this area and people are constantly coming up with new finishes to do on fabrics that enhances the performance of the fabric. So um, obviously moth control finish repels insects um, from the fabric. Mold and mildew finish uses chemicals that prevent mold or and mildew growth. Rot proof finishes, uh, these are good for outdoor products, awnings, lawn furniture, tents. Uh, they protect those from rotting. Uh, this is a wool fabric that is moth resistant. So the moths don't eat the fabric and it stays nice and clean. Antimicrobial, antiseptic, antibacterial, uh, or bacteriostatic finish, you know, those are different types of finishes that prevent bacterial growth, uh, prevent decay, and it also reduces the infection because it prevents the microbes or bacteria from getting into the skin. And there are different ways to do this. You know, there are either chemical methods, gas is used, or irradiation of the fabric. A microencapsulated finish uses microcapsules that are filled with some kind of disinfectant, insect repellent, fragrance. You know, you can fill them with whatever you want. And then whenever they explode and release uh, what is inside them, they can help the fabric perform that in that way. Flame retardant finishes, these are also safety related. Um, that prevents the flame from spreading. So if you guys remember when we did our burn test, when we burnt cotton fabrics, it just caught flame right away and started burning so fast. So uh, with a flame retardant finish, that cotton fabric would be a little more resistant to the flame before it catches in and starts spreading. Uh, liquid barrier finishes, those are finishes that are used usually for biological protective clothing or chemical protective clothing so that people who are dealing with chemicals do not get the chemicals into their skin. So the fabric acts like a liquid barrier. Light reflecting finishes, these are for products that we use uh, for visibility in, in low light or at night. Um, you know, the police officers sometimes use those or construction workers at night, you know, if they're working and they need some visibility that are light reflecting garments that they have to wear. Um, now, I do want to mention, you know, flame retardant and flame proof are a little bit different. When you have a flame proof fabric, which means it never catches flame, um, then you probably are using the flame proof fibers. So aramid fibers, PBI fibers, those are fibers that we use to make firefighters clothing. They do not allow, I mean, they do not burn easily unless you go to, I don't know, 4,000, 5,000 Fahrenheit. Um, so those are flame proof fabrics, but flame retardant treatments are usually done on fabrics that can catch flame easily. You just want to delay the burning process and if a fabric has high flammability you know that's the characteristic of a material you know this is how fast the fabric ignites and um, you can make a flame retardant fabric by either using flame retardant fibers like aramids and pbi or you can make some fiber modifications on the fabric or you can do a flame retardant finish. So there are different ways to make a fabric flame retardant. Some of those finishes are topical, like it's on the surface, but it will also uh, affect the fabric negatively sometimes. You know, the, the hand will change. Um, it will cost money to do these type of finishes. And sometimes they are temporary if there's a water soluble compound used. Liquid barrier protective finishes, those are finishes that uh, I mentioned. We use them in biological protective clothing, chemical protective clothing. So if there are viral and bacterial pathogens, uh, you don't want that to get into the skin of the person. Or if you're working with pesticides, you don't want that 
to penetrate into your garments and get into your skin. Uh, life reflective finishes. These are finishes that increase visibility at night. And for that, we usually use fluorescent dyes. Uh, and on the surface of the fabric, there are these uh, spheres that will re reflect the light in every direction. Now, if I can play this video, I'm going to try to see if we can. It's the fashion show season, and in parallel, Paris has been hosting the largest textile show in the world, Premier Vision. 742 exhibitors from 30 countries presented their offerings for the autumn winter 2007-2008 season. And this year, some special guests, so-called intelligent fabrics, textiles, for example, that have built-in protection against staining. If you imagine normal cloth being flat, with nanotechnologies, the cloth takes a form a little like mountains. The structure is invisible, of course, and dirt can't stick to a material like that. It runs off. So here, I'll put a bit of ketchup on, and I'll take some water, and there, you see, it's a white cloth, and you can rinse off the dirt immediately. Stain-resistant materials, bacteria-resistant materials, mosquito-resistant materials, materials that can absorb smell or reduce perspiration. Materials that can measure your heartbeat or your breathing pattern. Textiles that are totally impermeable. Textiles that are ultra absorbent. Cosmetic textiles that moisten the skin or apply perfume. The world of intelligent textiles is expanding and a multitude of European research centers are part of it. Here at saint Bell in Belgium, not far from Liège, scientists are dreaming up the next generation of intelligent or functional textiles. Prototype maker Martin Delgueda's job is to transform these dreams into reality. Here we have a pullover that's entirely knitted. The keyboard is supple. It enables the user to send a range of different commands. It was conceived for handicapped people to allow them, for example, with a given code, to open a garage door to switch on the television. We've also got undergarments that allow you to monitor different body functions, breathing, heartbeat, and so on, using electrodes that are in direct contact with the body. We can also insert fiber optics into carpet. They're integrated in the production process and to make the carpets luminous. They can be used for emergency exits, for example, if there's a power cut, or just to create pretty patterns within the carpet. We've also used fiber optics in knitting. This creates the possibility of luminous knitwear. It can be used for outdoor safety clothing, or it can be stuck on walls and ceilings for decorative effects. Uh, ou alors à l'intérieur pour faire des, des plafonds lumineux, des murs avec des dessins. Okay. The most complex of these prototypes is probably the textile keyboard, which can also function as a simple calculator. Jean Lénard has spent two years working on it. The key, the interaction of materials that do and don't conduct electricity. In addition to the conventional materials, which are electrical insulators, we've used metallic fibers that do conduct electricity. The principle is that when you don't apply pressure, there's no contact between two conducting layers. And when you apply pressure, you create a contact between the two layers. In addition to this, there's a small microelectric component which has been miniaturized as much as possible so that it disrupts the cloth as little as possible because the goal is to preserve the characteristics of textile, suppleness and comfort. Suppleness and comfort, those are the watchwords for functional and intelligent clothing. Yvette Rogister is in charge of the microbiology lab at the center. 
she unlocks the secrets of textiles using this giant microscope. Her research helps build an understanding of how fibers react to the presence of certain nanoparticles. For example, cosmetic nanoparticles that release perfumes into clothes. These are microcapsules which contain a perfume that's integrated within the fibers that make up the cloth. What we've been looking at here is how uniformly the microcapsules are spread across the cloth. And also, we wanted to have an idea of their dimensions. And then, after the materials being used, we wanted to see how the microcapsules react. They're supposed to explode and release their perfume. And in fact, what we've seen here is that there are indeed microcapsules that have exploded and thus released their perfume. At the Institut Francais du Textile et Habillement outside Lyon, intelligent textiles are tested for resistance against heat, flames, tearing, liquids, Engineers work on several Europe-wide projects and also invent their own textiles for the future. Once the concept has been established, the cloth is modeled to a chosen design. And added to a virtual collection of tomorrow's fashion. For dreams to become a reality, you need a plasma machine like this. Here in a vacuum, textiles are put in contact with different gases, oxygen, nitrogen, fluoride, or ammonia. In this way, researcher Jacques Maguin changes the textile properties. Fluorides, for example, make normally absorbent cotton impermeable, while nitrogen makes normally resistant materials absorbent. Nitrogen will separate off and try to impregnate itself in the textile. So using nitrogen gas, you can make a kind of water plasma which will attach itself to the surface. And when you put water next to this, there's a very strong affinity, and that makes a material that absorbs very easily, which is good for cleaning materials or for absorbing sweat or for sticky materials or for printable materials. On the other hand, fluoride gas makes cotton water resistant, so when it rains, it's impermeable, but still comfortable. In these workshops, a European program to make threads of the future is being researched. Christoph Angeloz is developing polypropylene thread that resists high temperatures. The polypropylene is mixed with chemical microparticles whose composition is a commercial secret. The mixture is pummeled, melted, stretched, and woven into yarn. It's all polypropylene, but by changing the manufacturing conditions, like the extrusion temperature, the weaving speed, the stretching tension, you can optimize the thread production. Threads which, like others made at the center, will now undergo testing to see if they might be useful in the creation of the new intelligent textiles of the future. Okay, now let's just try uh, to go over some of the things that we didn't cover through iTextiles. So if you go to iTextiles and click on functional finishes, you're going to get a lot more information here through your iTextiles. Uh, so it talks about functional finishes here also. It talks a little bit about nanotechnology. So uh, Nanotechnology is when you are using um, molecules that are in nano levels. So one nanometer is 10 to the minus nine meters, which means that it is a super small uh, molecule. So you can use those nano uh, size molecules to add certain properties to the fiber. So microcapsules are generally considered those nano particles, okay? And um, these are some registered trademarks of fabrics. 
that use nanoparticles to make stain re uh, repellent finishes like nanotax, nano dry, smart silver, micro encapsulation. This is what I talked about earlier with those capsules that you integrate into the fabric. Skintex is one of those uh, trademarks. And you can fill these micro capsules with fragrances, with insect repellents, with cooling materials. They are anchored on the fibers so you can have those properties on the fabric. And this is, you can see all the micro capsules inside the fiber. You can see these, this is the Skintex micro capsules in the fibers. Wrinkle resistant finish, we talked about that. And uh, this is a wrinkle recovery test where you take your fabric, wrinkle it, and then you can just compare it to different wrinkle recovery amounts. These are fabrics that are registered trademarks for uh, compressive shrinkage finish, samphorized, samphor, samphornit. I talked about shrinkage finish on wool fabrics where you are trying to get rid of some of those scales. Uh, remember I said that wool fabrics shrink because these scales hold on to other fibers and they just get caught and they shrink. So to prevent that, we are generally just smoothening up the surface, making the scales a lot smoother and so they don't get caught on each other and they don't shrink. Superwash is a registered trademark with a felting shrinkage. And we did talk about water repellent finishes. Um, I showed you some examples of those. This is a water repellent finish on a denim fabric. And remember denim fabrics are made out of cotton and cotton is very hydrophilic and absorbent. So if you want cotton to be water repellent, you have to have a finish on that fabric. We talked about stain or soil repellent finishes. Uh, Teflon is a registered trademark of that. So Teflon actually is a polymer called PTFE or polytetrafluoroethylene. And you can apply it on fabrics and that will create a more stain resistance or stain repellent surface. Nanosphere is another tra registered trademark. Those are for stain resistant and uh, soil resistant finishes. This fabric has no finish. So when you drop some milk on it, you see that it, get, it gets absorbed by the fabric and spreads around and it will very likely stain the fabric. But this one, this fabric has the finish. So the juice, whatever you put on it, it just stays as a bead and it doesn't get absorbed and spreads on the fabric. I showed you this example earlier. And now this is a nanosphere um, fabric. This is a fabric that uses nanotechnology for self-cleaning fabrics. And they put all these different juices, mustard, ketchup, food coloring, turmeric, cranberry juice. And when they rinsed the fabric and washed it, you can see that it didn't really stain the fabric. You know, it's a self-cleaning finish. And you can see a little bit of the turmeric because turmeric stains everything. But generally speaking, you know, none of these things get, got absorbed by the fabric. So they didn't really stain it. If you wash it, it just goes away. We talked about soil release. Um, sometimes they combine stain repellent and soil re resistant finishes together. Stain Smart is another registered trademark with that kind of finish. This is a Stain Smart fabric, and you can see I think this is coke, and the coke just beads up on the surface, it doesn't get absorbed. Moisture management finishes, you know, these are finishes where you are trying to uh, provide comfort by transporting the moisture away from the skin. So if you're sweating, for example, your fabric will absorb your, your sweat 
and then it will just transport it to the outside of the fabric. And that way the fabric will dry because, you know, hydrophilic fabrics are absorbent. They love water, they love moisture, they absorb it, but they are also very difficult to dry because they're always absorbing moisture. So these kind of finishes will make them dry faster because they are transporting that moisture away from the body to the outer parts of the fabric and then makes it dry a little bit faster. Uh, so TransDry is a registered trademark. Nanotax is one of those. Wicking Windows is a trademark. So those are fabrics that dry very quickly. So this is a Wicking Windows. Uh, this is also a registered trademark. So on this one, you have this um, finish where the moisture is moved away from the body. So on the face of the fabric, you can see the stain. But on the back, the liquid is just moving away from the back. This is where the fabric is touching your skin. So it's moving that moisture away from your skin to the outside of the fabric where it can dry really fast. We talked about phase change and temperature regulating finishes. So they are using the phase change technology Sometimes they use the silver-based finishes. Silver is actually a great material for uh, doing finishes. The, it's also used for antimicrobial finishes. And uh, especially with people who have a burn, they do use silver-coated fabrics uh, because silver is uh, something that heals people with a burn. So silver is used a lot in textiles for those kind of uh, processes, but it's also used for temperature regulation. You can also use cooling gels and things like that on a fabric. But the phase change technology is really interesting. For example, you know, during hot weather, the fabric will absorb the heat and changes from a solid to a liquid, and it provides a cooling effect. In cold weather, this finish will release the heat and change from liquid to solid. So it will be warming the body. They uh, used a temperature regulating finish on, on a material. This is Outlast. This is one of those uh, products with temperature regulation finishes. So what they did here is they used infrared to understand how hot uh this hand is and this is the normal temperature it's hot so the red means hot blue means cold and you know yellow and green is kind of the ideal temperature here so on this hand they use the uh, outlast material like they use the glove made out of outlast material which is a temperature regulating material and they made the person put their hand on a block of ice for five minutes. In this one, they did the same thing, except they didn't use the temperature regulating glove. So you can see that this one kind of stays warm while this one got really cold because of the ice. This is the outlast finish that they have. So um, these micro capsules, are the ones that are absorbing the heat or releasing the heat in different phases, depending on the outside temperature. We talked about flame resistant finishes. Uh, this is an example of a flame resistant um, effect. So cotton fabrics, you remember, they just catch the flame and ignite really quickly and the flame spreads really quickly on the fabric. But on this cotton fabric, they did a flame resistant finish and they tried to ignite it, and you can see that it didn't really spread very quickly. So a flame-resistant finish on a cotton fabric will not prevent it from burning, but it will prevent it the uh, ignition, or at least delay the ignition and prevent it from spreading. This is another flame-retardant fabric. So when they tried to ignite it with a lighter, this is what happened. 
This is another cotton fabric with a flame retardant finish. And you can see what happened here. Another fire retardant fabric. So they tried to burn it and this is what happened. We talked about antimicrobial finishes. We said they inhibit the growth of microbes or antibacterial finishes. They inhibit the growth of bacteria. And we are pretty much done with everything. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about sustainability if we get a chance.